Welcome to this lesson, where we again begin in the warm-up area just short of the active runway, and will perform the Harrier's namesake short takeoff and landing. A short takeoff, or stow, is the general purpose and most widely used takeoff type, with nearly infinite combinations of speed and nozzle angles to account for varying payloads and environmental conditions. This remarkable capability allows Marine commanders to carry this aircraft with them from ship to shore, and operate almost anywhere, from seized and damaged airfield to a small section of road. Given its flexibility, it is important to practice this often. As with the previous tutorial, we will begin with pre-positioning and takeoff checks as our configuration changes. Pre-positioning checks are performed in accordance with the mnemonic C waiver, which stands for Clock, Weapons, Avionics, IFF, Video Recording System, Electronic Countermeasures, and Radar Altimeter. First, set the clock by pressing the timer, or TMR, button on the UFC. Select TTT with ODU-2 and then press ODU-1 and verify that the clock shows 8 a.m. Next, press ODU-5 and check that the UTC time shows 4 a.m. Verify that this is the same as the time shown in the cockpit watch and on the HUD. At this point, you could also set the desired time on target, but we don't need to do it for this sortie. Next, you would program your weapons via the UFC Weapons, or WPN, button and ODU. Since we aren't carrying weapons for this familiarization flight, we'll skip this step. It will be explained with greater detail in Stores Management Training Mission. Configure your avionics for the sortie. On the right NPCD, return to the menu on push button 18, press T-Pod on push button 13, and verify that the standby mode is underlined on push button 15. Set your FLIR by pressing Menu, Push Button 18, and then FLIR, Push Button 1. Set the mode back to black or white by pressing Push Button 20. Set up your take-in by pressing the TCN button. Enter 6-7 on your scratch pad for Cabaletti and press Enter. Next, turn it on by pressing the on-off button. You will notice a small take-in symbol appearing next to your aircraft on the left MPCD. Set up your video recording system by setting your VRS and MFCD slash HUD switches as desired. Next, you would set your electronic countermeasure switches by performing a bit and monitoring for failures. This isn't necessary on our fan flight, so we'll skip it. Finally, set your radar altimeter low altitude warning to 4900 feet. First, press ALT button on your UFC. Next, colonize GPS with ODU button 3 and check that the Ground Proximity Warning System, or GPWS, is colonized. Type 4900 and press Enter. You may leave BOM and Pull-Up Queue, or PUC, uncolonized, as we will not be employing ordnance. Confirm that your canopy is locked and that your canopy closed light is extinguished. Make sure that the ejection seat is armed by checking that the ground safety control handle on the right side of the seat is closed and pointing down. Recheck that your standby instruments match. In Instrument Meteorological Conditions, or IMC, or at night, we would turn on the APU. Since it's clear and unlimited, we'll leave this off. Ensure the anti-skid switch is in the on position. Next, we will check our abort numbers for the field we're on. On the right MPCD, select Menu on push button 18, select VREST on push button 8, and box Short Takeoff. On the ODU, select Field Data or FDAT with ODU button 4, colonize Runway Distance or RDIS with ODU button 1, and input a runway length of 7870 feet into the scratch pad confirming your entry with the Enter button on the UFC. The length is the distance between the start of your takeoff roll and the long field arresting gear, if installed. Colonize Runway Heading, or RHDG, with ODU button 2, enter a runway heading of 244 degrees magnetic, and confirm your entry with the Enter button on the UFC. Colonize Ground Wind, or GWND, with ODU button 3, Enter a ground wind direction of 310 degrees magnetic and a magnitude of 004 knots, and confirm your entries with the Enter button on the UFC.
Verify that Dry Runway, or RDRY, is colonized in ODU Window 5 as we are experiencing dry runway conditions. If it isn't, press the button. Calculate your abort criteria by pressing the Abort, or ABRT button, on PB16 on your VREST SO page. Your abort speed, or ASPD, and stopping distance, SDST, values will be displayed. Place your altitude, or ALT, switch in the radar, or RDR, position. Make sure that your INS knob is in the IFA position to ensure a tightly coupled GPS and INS throughout your flight. Turn your approach light on. Next, we will begin our takeoff checklist, which consists of another series of finger checks, so named because they are signaled and confirmed with the fingers extended. The first check is a one-finger configuration check, followed by either a two-finger dry acceleration check or a five-finger wet acceleration check. Begin one-finger checks by finding our dry nozzle rotation airspeed, or NRAS, on the VRS stow page on your right MPCD. Press the VSTOL master mode button to colonize the ODU with VSTOL options. Select nozzle rotation airspeed, or NRAS, with ODU button 1 and enter the calculated value in the scratch pad. Confirm the entry with the enter button on the UFC. This will box the HUD airspeed indicator when the aircraft has reached the entered speed, indicating when you should rotate your nozzles to the calculated angle. The minimum NRAS is 50 knots. Select Pitch Carrots, or PC, with ODU button 2 and verify a default setting of 14 degrees in the scratch pad. This sets the Pitch Carrots to 6 degrees above the horizon, where we will seek to place the Depressed Attitude Indicator, or Witch's Hat, for an accelerating transition into wingborne flight. Set the short takeoff or stow stop lever to the dry nozzle or NOZ value calculated on the VREST stow page on your right MPCD, 60 degrees, which is also the most commonly used and a maximum nozzle angle prevented for a short takeoff. Turn the stabilator to 2 degrees nose down. Set flaps to stall, observe 25 degrees in the flaps position indicator, and verify that no warning, caution, or advisory lights are illuminated other than droop, which can be on. Select menu on the right MPCD on push button 18, and select engine on push button 11. Set the nozzle lever to the stow stop and verify that the engine display panel matches the HUD. Verify that the flaps adjust to 62 degrees and that the flaps indicator matches the HUD with droop light illuminated. Reset the nozzle lever to 10 degrees. Request permission from tower to take the active runway and take off. Couple Eddie, Dodge 1-1. One, one. Request taxi to runway. Dodge 1-1. One, one. Couple Eddie, clear to taxi to runway 25. When cleared for takeoff, release the brakes and taxi onto the runway, steering the aircraft onto the runway center line. Apply the brakes to come to a stop with the aircraft nose pointed down the runway. From this position, we will conduct two-finger XL checks and immediately transition into our takeoff roll. We will cover five-finger wet acceleration checks in the vertical takeoff and landing and FARP operations lessons. Dodge one one request takeoff. Dodge one one. Cobra ready. You are cleared for takeoff and ready. Climb three zero zero at QFE two nine decimal eight six.
box acceleration or excel on push button 16 on the engine page on your right MPCD. Hold the brakes and advance the throttle to just above 60%, then reduce the power to maintain 60%. The aircraft will time how long it takes for the engine to spool between 35% and 60%. Verify that this value is between 2.4 and 3.1 seconds on the engine page. Next, place the nozzles at 30 degrees and check that the duct pressure is 45 plus or minus 3 psi. Once verified, place the nozzles back at 10 degrees. On the left MPCD, select EHSD with either push button 2 or sensor select switch left. On the right MPCD, select FLIR with push button 1. Two finger checks are complete. Okay, let's go through the next steps. Don't do anything yet. I will then give you abbreviated instructions. You will initiate your takeoff by engaging nose wheel steering. Advance the throttle to full power. Release the brakes before the tire skid. Verify top end RPM is achieved. Steer the aircraft for center line. At the calculated NRAS speed, indicated by the box around your airspeed indicator, quickly move the nozzle lever to the stow stop and allow the aircraft to take off. Do not rotate with the stick. As the aircraft leaves ground effect, smoothly capture 4 to 6 degrees of pitch. Keep the witch's hat indicator inside the pitch carrots, ensuring a positive rate of climb. Raise the landing gear by placing the landing gear handle in the up position. This will reduce the engine temperature and extinguish the 15 seconds light if lit. Maintain 12 to 14 degrees of AOA by smoothly nozzling out to 25 degrees as quickly as the aircraft performance will permit. Use the velocity vector as a visual reference above the horizon bars to help ensure a positive rate of climb. At 25 degrees nozzles and at least 120 knots indicated airspeed, select auto flaps by placing the flap switch in the auto position and finish smoothly moving the nozzles fully aft to 0 degrees. Your duct pressure should read between 0 and 3 psi. Level off at 2000 feet AGL, reduce power and seek to capture an airspeed of 250 knots indicated airspeed. Continue towards waypoint 1 and anchor there. All right, initiate the takeoff, engage NWS on your stick. Full power and release brakes. Nozzles down at NRAS speed. Capture four to six degrees pitch. Gear up. When ready, nozzles to 25 degrees. Flaps auto, nozzles fully aft. Level off at 2,000 feet AGL, reduce power, and seek to capture an airspeed of 250 knots indicated airspeed. Select the nav master mode button. Continue towards waypoint 1 and anchor there.
Okay, now let's talk about our short or slow landings. There are two types to go over. Each is used in different stores and environmental conditions. Fixed nozzle slow landings, or FNSL, are the most common slow landings, able to be used in most environments where maximum performance isn't necessary. It gets its name from the fact that the pilot sets the nozzles and doesn't adjust them until after touchdown. There are two techniques, each with slightly different procedures. The recommended FNSL is conducted with stole flaps because it is easy to perform, less costly in fuel than other types, and the short landing distance charts based on this configuration. An alternate version of the FNSL is conducted with auto flaps, usually only used when crosswinds exceed 15 knots during the day or 10 knots at night, and precluding a landing below 140 knots calibrated airspeed, or when there are high stores asymmetries. Variable nozzle slow landings, or VNSL, are less common, but provide a maximum performance at wave-off margins, especially at high field elevations, in hot weather, or when bringing back a lot of ordnance. In this case, the pilot sets a specified power setting and performs slight trial and error variations of nozzle angles to maintain a steady, optimum angle of attack. The recommended VNSL is conducted with stole flaps, but requires a power setting high enough that the nozzles won't be set less than 50 degrees, so that the stole flaps do not raise inadvertently, but low enough so you will have power available if a wave off is necessary. The alternate version is conducted with auto flaps and is used for VNSL RPM settings below 90% or in the event of an emergency, such as a stuck throttle below 90% pour an oil caution. In this mission, we will practice both fixed nozzle slow landings, as current conditions, light loadout, low altitude of the airfield, and moderate temperature, can make the variable nozzle ones very difficult, if not dangerous. You can practice those in separate short Now I will explain what is expected of you. I will repeat the abbreviated instructions when you perform the actual landing. Once again, the fixed nozzle slow landing is the most common one and the easiest to perform. The procedure is as follows. Once the runway disappears from view below the nose of your aircraft, execute a break by banking to the right. It is a level turn in which you will capture 4G in the beginning and then intercept and keep 10 units of angle of attack, or AOA. Remember about reducing the throttle. Hold that turn for 180 degrees until you are flying parallel to the runway at 244 degrees. You should enter this downwind leg at or below 250 knots indicated airspeed. Once leveled off, perform the landing checklist. Lower the landing gear. Set flaps to stall mode. Check that the stow stop is clear and stowed aft. Check for positive duct pressure. Check that the brake pressure is 2700 psi with pedals depressed and make sure that the water switch is set as required for landing performance. Approaching the 180 at 1.3 to 1.5 nautical miles of beam, around half the length of the runway beyond its starting point, set the nozzles to 60 degrees and double check that your flaps are installed. Switch to the radar altimeter by entering the VSTOL HUD master mode. Install flaps as you slow through 165 knots, your aircraft may balloon and pitch down as the flaps program and the ailerons droop. Verify that your droop light is on and prepare to add power to maintain 10 to 12 units AOA between 85 to 95 percent power. If power exceeds 100%, set a lower nozzle angle to enter the 85 to 95% power range. At the 180, begin your turn towards the runway. For reference, use the two small lakes near the airport. You want to almost get to them. Control your descent with a stick and seek a roughly 5 degree glide path through the first half of the turn to the 90, and a 3 degree glide path past the 90, with a rate of descent between 1,000 and 1,500 feet per minute. You are targeting between 500 and 600 feet AGL at the 90 and between 200 and 225 feet AGL when you roll out on final, or in the groove. On final, you may require a power reduction to remain on speed between 10 and 12 units of AOA. Ensure you are maintaining coordinated flight with your rudder. Maintain a 3 degree glide path on final. At around 50 feet AGL, assume landing attitude by placing the witch's hat at 2 degrees above the horizon. Continue to control your rate of descent with your throttle and attitude with the stick, with a rate of descent between 200 and 400 feet per minute. Do not allow the aircraft's nose to drop due to stabilator exhaust impingement. At touchdown, set the throttle to idle and make sure that you are rolling straight with the pedals neutralized before engaging nose wheel steering, or NWS. Set the nozzles to 98 degrees for power nozzle braking, or PNB, 
Trim for 2 degrees nose down and set the throttle no higher than 70% to slow the aircraft. As the aircraft slows below 60 knots ground speed, bring the throttle back to idle, place the nozzles to the hover stop, and use wheel brakes to finish slowing the aircraft. Set the water switch to off and bring the nozzles to 60 degrees. Set the nozzles to 10 degrees as you approach taxi speeds. That's about it. I will now let you focus on your approach. Select waypoint 2 and use the course dial knob to set the runway heading of 064. Make sure to align your aircraft with the course line. Arrive over the runway at 800 feet and 350 knots and fly straight until I tell you to turn. I will then be giving you abbreviated instructions. Dodge, one, one, inbound. Break right, 4G level turn, AOA, 10 units. Stay below 250 knots indicated. Gear down, flaps to stall, and checks to stop. Landing, gear, landing, gear. Enter v Master Mode. 
Set nozzles to 60 degrees, enter the 85 to 95 percent power range. Begin turn towards runway. First half at 5 degree, second at 3 degree glide path. Get to 225 feet on final. Use rudder. Maintain 3 degree glide path at 50 feet, which is hat at 2 degrees up. Throttle to idle, then nozzles to 98 degrees. Throttle to 70%, trim 2 degrees, nose down. Throttle to idle, nozzles to the hover stop, use brakes to stop the aircraft. Good, now perform another short takeoff, climb to 2000 feet, and return to waypoint 1. Once there, enter orbit and we will go through the auto fix nozzle slow landing.
As a reminder, auto flaps fixed nozzle landing is performed during high crosswinds, exceeding 15 knots during the day or 10 knots during night, or when there is a high stores asymmetry. It is generally faster than the one done with the stole flaps. For the auto fixed nozzle slow landing, the procedure is very similar with some minor changes on downwind and when approaching the 180. Once the runway disappears from view below the nose of your aircraft, execute a brake by banking to the right. It is a level turn in which you will capture 4G in the beginning and then intercept and keep 10 units of angle of attack, or AOA. Remember about reducing the throttle. Hold that turn for 180 degrees until you are flying parallel to the runway at 244 degrees. You should enter this downwind leg at or below 250 knots indicated airspeed. Once leveled off, perform the landing checklist. Lower the landing gear. Keep flaps in auto mode. Check that the stow stop is clear and stowed aft. Check for positive duct pressure. Check that the brake pressure is 2700 PSI with pedals depressed and make sure that the water switch is set as required for landing performance. Approaching the 180 at 1.3 to 1.5 nautical miles of beam, around half the length of the runway beyond its starting point, set the nozzles to 60 degrees and double check that your flaps are in auto. Switch to the radar altimeter by entering the VSTOL HUD master mode. You should be slowed down to 10 to 12 units of AOA, using between 85 and 95% power. If power exceeds 100%, set a lower nozzle angle to enter the 85 to 95% power range. At the 180, begin your turn towards the runway. For reference, use the two small lakes near the airport. You want to almost get to them. Control your descent with a stick and seek a roughly 5 degree glide path through the first half of the turn to the 90, and a 3 degree glide path past the 90 with a rate of descent between 1,000 and 1,500 feet per minute. You are targeting between 500 and 600 feet AGL at the 90 and between 200 and 225 feet AGL when you roll out on final, or in the groove. On final, you may require a power reduction to remain on speed between 10 and 12 units of AOA. Ensure you are maintaining coordinated flight with your rudder. Maintain a 3 degree glide path on final and fly a crabbed approach to ensure your aircraft is lined up on the center line. At around 50 feet AGL, assume landing attitude by placing the witch's hat at 2 degrees above the horizon, continue to control your rate of descent with your throttle and attitude with the stick with a rate of descent between 200 and 400 feet per minute. Do not allow the aircraft's nose to drop due to stapulator exhaust impingement. At touchdown, set the throttle to idle and make sure that you are rolling straight with the pedals neutralized before engaging nose wheel steering, or NWS. Set the nozzles to 98 degrees for power nozzle braking, or PNB. Trim for 2 degrees nose down and set the throttle no higher than 70% to slow the aircraft. As the aircraft slows below 60 knots ground speed, bring the throttle back to idle, place the nozzles to the hover stop, and use wheel brakes to finish slowing the aircraft. Set the water switch to off and bring the nozzles to 60 degrees. Set the nozzles to 10 degrees as you approach taxi speeds. That's about it. I will now let you focus on your approach. Select waypoint 2 and use the course dial knob to set the runway heading of 064. Make sure to align your aircraft with the course line. Arrive over the runway at 800 feet and 350 knots and fly straight until I tell you to turn. I will then be giving you abbreviated instructions.
Break right, 4G level turn, AOA, 10 units. Stay below 250 knots indicated. Gear down, flaps to auto, check stow stop. Landing, gear, landing, gear. Enter VSTOL master mode. Set nozzles to 60 degrees. Enter the 85 to 95 percent power range. Begin turn towards runway. First half at 5 degree, second at 3 degree glide path. Get to 225 feet on final. Use rudder. Maintain 3 degree glide, crabbed approach. At 50 feet, we just had at 2 degrees up. Throttle to idle, then nozzles to 98 degrees. Throttle to 70%, trim 2 degrees, nose down. Throttle to idle, nozzles to the hover stop, use brakes to stop the aircraft. Very good. I advise that you practice each type of landing separately in order to get proficient. You can use shorter training missions with different weather conditions for that. Taxi to the parking spot and shut down your engine. Whoa, you actually taxi to a spot and shut down? That's either some serious dedication or perhaps a lack of other things to do. Or maybe both. Not like I'm one to talk, I'm about to go plot myself in front of a gaming console and try to unlock alternate aircraft paint schemes by flying the same mission repeatedly with slightly different variables. Hey, don't judge me.